So I wrote down these focus points that I want to be talking about, but I wanted to put a quick disclaimer into this uh, chat I'm about to have about the games. I still believe Hearthstone is a great game. I believe Heart of Rune Terror is a great game. I just want to talk about the reasons why I chose to switch. Uh, most of it's going to be, 80% of it is going to be relative to the uh, game itself. Okay. But then 20% of it's going to be a bit more personal. Personal? Eh, nah, probably not. Let's say 50-50. It's 50-50 for my reasons behind it. So, my thoughts about Hearthstone, first of all. That's like the first thing I wanted to write here. I think Hearthstone is a great game. I think it like... I think it like revised my interest in card games because if you guys don't know I've played card games pretty much my entire life I got very intensely competitive when it comes to Pokemon played a lot of Yu-Gi-Oh when I was a bit younger played Pokemon later in life I kind of had that break from card games in between as we just kind of played games and worked and then I revisited Hearthstone about four years ago not revisited but decided to pick it up because I was interested in playing card games again, so I jumped on the Hearthstone bandwagon. When did you play Pokemon? TCG, I played Pokemon TCG during Black and White, early X and Y. Black and White, mostly early X and Y. And this was actually kind of just before uh, Hearthstone. Same time you played? Nice. But um, yeah, that piqued my interest in card games again for sure. I revisited Pokemon a few times throughout my adult life. And then eventually, um, I just thought about playing Hearthstone one day. I just picked it up, started playing it, started climbing the legend pretty quickly. I'm like, whoa, this is pretty fun. I've never considered making YouTube content before. So then I decided to start making videos about Hearthstone. And I did that for about three years. Uh, long story short, I eventually, um, I got, o I got over it. I kind of lost a lot of interest, lost a lot of passion. And this is kind of, kind of, I'm gonna double this up with my content creation journey as I speak about Hearthstone. So as I played Hearthstone, I started making content for it. I realized it was starting to go okay. We just started Rice Guy. You're just tuning in. We're just talking about my thoughts about Hearthstone. So I, I, I truly believe Hearthstone really changed my life first of all <laughs> it changed like how i'd proceed in my future and what my ambitions were and it piqued a lot of um passion into youtube both hearthstone and youtube have that kind of sharing in common it's kind of like i lost my virginity to youtube and hearthstone together that's where my virginity is so it's always going to be a special <laughs> a special um time for me Unfortunately, uh, as kind of ironically, unironically, I started to lose a bit of passion and drive for my YouTube content. So did my passion for Hearthstone, unfortunately. And it's kind of hard because um, most of my friends aren't really as interested in card games as I am. So I haven't had anyone to really talk to about Hearthstone or card games in general. So it kind of didn't help for my staying interested in it. And then eventually, it just kind of all stopped. Everything just stopped. I stopped playing Hearthstone. I stopped making YouTube videos. And I just moved on with my life. I was going back to work. Like I was already working during all this. So I was trying to balancing, trying to be as competitive in Hearthstone as possible. Make YouTube videos, spend time with my wife and work. So it was all getting very overwhelming, but I kept proceeding. Now, a big part of my drive for any uh, game, okay? A big part of my drive for any game is competitive scene, okay? We'll get to the competitive scene in a sec, but I will finish off by saying I had a ton of fun playing Hearthstone for a couple of years. It was an amazing experience. I think I joined Hearthstone at a really good time. That was during the year of the Mammoth when they kind of brought out, brought out the, uh, I can't remember the expansion now. Yo, Tuna Zays, thanks for the follow, man. But the year of the mammoth, I can't remember what expansions they were, but that was an amazing year for Hearthstone, the best year for Hearthstone, and ironically, the first, when I first started, just before it all started, so that was heaps of fun. And I got this competitive drive, I really wanted to get into it, and so I tried pushing. I uh, won a few tournaments, uh, qualified for a few, not majors, but uh, tournament prior to the major, unfortunately not 
picking up wins where I needed to, so I never really made it that far into it. Now, I've had shit internet for a very long time. So the downfall of my entire Hearthstone content creation was the fact that I had to use shit internet to upload videos to YouTube and I couldn't stream. All these things happened. I had this con my content creation journey that kept going on and then eventually ev ev it all stopped anyway. So I won't talk about Hearthstone much more. I just want to make a big point that Hearthstone is an amazing game as we proceed with my thoughts about all this. And that's that. Mean Street to Gadsden. That's when I first started, the main streets of Gadgetson. And then I following into the next year is when I went full on into it. I didn't want to join halfway through, now you're right. I'm younger, so I played just Yu-Gi-Oh! and Hearthstone now lore. I, Pokemon TCG has been going on for a while too, Davey. Ironically, when I started as well, there you go. It, it's all it's all very much timing. I've also written down timing as a big factor. I kind I think I kind of covered that as well but not fully. So timing, eventually I got better internet as well, which led to me kind of returning to this card game scene. Okay, I think the biggest, the biggest, the biggest thing that drove me out of Hearthstone to follow up with this and finish my final thoughts is the competitive scene. So when I first started Hearthstone, the way to kind of get better and get like, you know, uh, get qualified for events and stuff is to essentially, either climb to legend i multiple times then you can earn earn champ points so you'd earn champ points essentially by pl uh, placing high legend that was one way to do it and that can get you qualified for tournaments and that was really cool you could also be already like uh, playing in tournaments as well that you've already qualified for to get more points and it was quite easy to get into like all you had to do to start getting invited to these massive events was just jump into Hearthstone, grind the shit out of ladder make it to like high legend placements doing a mixture of a few things like playing in tournaments or hitting a high legend you get invited to tournaments you perform well and then you keep and you kind of snowball you're able you are able to like kind of snowball your um effectiveness really and in the end one of the easiest ways to do it was to reach high legend multiple times but there was other ways of doing it too and uh, things were looking good and they made some improvements to it uh the competitive scene as time went on like open tournaments with no no requirements so there's no requirements for these open tournaments and they were a good way for people, for newbies to earn points. They introduced, they introduced a like uh, newbie friendly open tournament, which pro players couldn't play in this one. So no players who had already qualified for events or players who like had already competed. So this was strictly for people like me who were like interested in like entering the scene, getting involved in Hearthstone and pushing it for easy, quick access. Anyway, long story short, long story short, as time went on, they pretty much scrapped all that. I think it was the last year actually, they just, or the maybe the year before, they pretty much scrapped that entire thing. And they did like these, um, yeah, this was a big driving factor. They didn't completely scrap it, but all that stuff I just showed you, they scrapped it and it got reformed. It got reformed and they changed it into these like, so there'll be like a, a few major tournaments. A few major tournaments a year that anyone would play in just had to sign up but they were offline tournaments a few major tournaments a year that were offline so they were at a location all around the world so this was no longer you had to like so to get to these tournaments it's easy to sign up you're already like you can already compete which is still okay the problem is you have to pay for tickets, accommodation, 
tickets, accommodation, ETC. Like you have to pay for everything. So like last year or the year, the year before, I can't remember now, but there was like a few major tournaments in the year. One was at like Las Vegas. One was somewhere in Europe and they have them like each side of the world. And one was like in fucking um, somewhere in like Korea or something. I couldn't, I could no longer, I could no longer comfortably be. I could no longer comfortably compete. With this huge change, I can't, I can't fucking spell, dude. I didn't finish school. Give me a fucking break. Basically, I could no longer comfortably compete and it kind of, this drove lots of wannabe Hearthstone pros away. All this stuff drove lots of wannabe Hearthstone pros away. And then they eventually introduced Hearthstone League at this point, I gave up. Eventually, they introduced this Hearthstone League, which was basically once you've like, like won tournaments or like when they first made the league, they literally just invited some like top players, whether they, they were currently good or not. They made this Hearthstone League, which was like the final product, like the final objective for a Hearthstone player. <laughs> But to get invited into Hearthstone League, you had to like win a major, which is like almost impossible. This is almost impossible. They made, they basically, they made it almost impossible to, um, they made it almost impossible to pursue Hearthstone as a competitive game, which is already quite tough in like a card game format, but they really just took away all the sense of community, all the sense of like, like seeing direction and how you could too become a competitor. They just got rid of all that. What's good? Not much, man. What's going on? It's not for bad, so. So all things aside, competitive scene died and I kind of, um, I lost, I lost a lot of interest at that point. This was all going alongside like my cr content creation journey, which was already kind of, I was just losing passion for. And then in general, like, Hearthstone gameplay eventually got to me. Like, I haven't played many digital card games. I played a little bit of Magic and obviously Runeterra wasn't out yet. And I didn't play Gwent or anything. So Hearthstone was all I knew for the longest period of time. But man, when I, when I look at Hearthstone, they, they started like, right before I finished playing, they brought out a card that says, so if you have no duplicates in your deck when you play it, Create the perfect card. Hearthstone created a card, I forgot what it was called, but you'd literally play it, you'd discover a card and it'd be the perfect card. So it was able to give you the perfect card out of a few options you'd choose for whatever situation you were in. It was a one-off OP card, right? You had to build your deck a certain way, but if you ever drew it and you played it, it would literally just give you like a board clear, Zephyrus the Great, that's the one. Zephyrus the Great is one of the most toxic cards I've ever seen in a card game. At that point, all other things aside, um, that kind of, I just like really started to lose interest. And um, you know, I haven't always played um, card games. I also have played other games and just like general gaming in general, you do tend to like, you know, play different stuff. It's quite natural. I guess because I was so focused on this Hearthstone because of all my content, I felt like I was so committed to the game. I had to play it and I'd play through all this like RNG stuff. And it was just, yeah, it was like kind of like, it was getting to me. Just general tilt stuff and stuff. And, um, but yeah, without, without shitting on Hearthstone too much, I wasn't a fan of like how they started to like build their cards. I think they may have fixed it up recently, but for a good couple of expansions, there was just nonsense getting brought out and it was very unfun and um, yeah, I wasn't too happy. And uh, I will add this on to the kind of Riot's plans future updates. I want to also talk about the updates that Hearthstone kind of went through. So Hearthstone would bring out an expansion every four months and then that was it. They'd sometimes bring out like a, an emergency patch balance because some cards were super broken. But for the majority of the time, Hearthstone would bring out an expansion every four months. You get X amount of cards and then you were just like left 
left with those for like the entirety of it. And so when it comes to content creation, this is quite hard because half like I, there's a common trend with uh, content creators. Anyone that makes card games would probably know this. You could ask anyone. There's like the boom period, which is when like a new expansion comes out or a patch comes out. And it's like the boom period where like content's kind of like high traffic for a few weeks and then it kind of dies off very quickly. It dies off very quickly. So making half stone content was like, I felt like this obligation all the time to whenever a new expansion come out, like play my brain out and just focus on bringing out as much video as I could in a short period of time. Because after like the three to four week mark, it just like decays. And then it's just dead for three months. So it was quite hard to make content consistently throughout like the three month period where like the, the meta's dead, everything's settled. No one's interested in like new cards anymore or anything. And that was just kind of it. So it'd be kind of hard to go from having like the boom period of bringing out like content and then just kind of just decay. And then Rune Terror come along, right? Rune Terror come along. And I'm like, all right. Cool, I heard about this. At this point, I've already, I'm already like, haven't played Hearthstone for a few months. I haven't made YouTube videos for almost a year. And then, yeah, now I saw Riot announced a card game. I'm like, whoa, shit. And for you guys that don't know, I have played a lot of League of Legends my entire life. In terms of uh, Hearthstone, I was never really into the lore or anything, by the way, guys. I uh, never... I played World of Warcraft a little bit when I was younger, but I never really like followed the characters or anything. So I wasn't as committed to like the lore as I've like kind of wrote down here, but I never really was in terms of card games. I think something that piqued my interest a lot during Pokemon TCG journey was that I generally really liked Pokemon. So it helped to keep me really interested in collecting the cards. Something about collecting um, real cards, cardboard cards, it was quite exhilarating. Blizzard is quite Blizzard is quite known for updating games slowly. Yeah, they are. They did kind of like pick up the game a little bit towards the end of my journey, but it was too late. I stopped playing Hearthstone when Demon Hunter arrived. I stopped playing before then, but I heard there was a lot of problems with Demon Hunter. I heard there was a shit ton of problems and they actually updated the game two times like within a couple of months. They nerfed Demon Hunter once and they nerfed it again. And that was the end of that. Anyway, so Riot announced Runeterra. It did pique my interest immediately. Now, I didn't stop playing Hearthstone as well, but just because strictly I got over card games, I just kind of got over Hearthstone, okay? I've always had a huge interest in card games, and whenever I see something come up like this, I get excited, and I'm like, holy shit. It's like League of Legends card game. I can get behind the lore. I know all the characters, and that could be heaps of fun. And then I realized, I wonder how Riot's going to tackle this. How, what, what is their like ambitions for the game? And so we, that's when we learn about all the information. I'm sure most people are quite aware of like Runeterra bringing out their like branding behind games going to be free, you know, mostly free. You don't have to pay for the cards. We just want to have you to pay for cosmetics and stuff. I'm like, hell yeah, dude. This sounds kind of exciting. This is kind of cool. And then uh, eventually they start talking about how regularly they want to update the game which is like, uh, they want to do like a patch every two weeks with a balanced patch every month. I'm like, holy shit. So I want to talk about, no, I'm not going to talk too much about Runeterra because I'll talk about like why I'm interested in it. But for a lot of, for a lot of the reasons why I'm playing Runeterra right now, like 70% of it is because like this stuff kind of died in Hearthstone for me. And so it drifted me towards Runeterra. But when I saw that, they were planning on doing this regular updates. It kind of piqued my interest in revisiting my content creation journey. It, it, it interests me because I realized if they're going to update the game this regularly and be bringing out content quite regularly, um, it's going to help a lot with content, ton, content creation because I'm going to be able to, you know, always have fresh stuff to talk about. There's always going to be something to talk about and it wouldn't be too difficult to really come up with ideas and, uh, Obviously the whole spectrum of Runeterra is it's more built around, um, you can use every single class together and build whatever deck you want with whatever cards you want. And that's really cool. Hearthstone was limited to, you'd have your, you'd have your, um, I forgot what they're called now, classes, and then you'd have neutral cards. 
but you can never mix classes not for competitive at least so you're limited very limited in your deck building and decks were pretty much figured out very quickly in Hearthstone so content creation was just so difficult in Hearthstone but lots of potential in Runeterra one of the bigger things too that I haven't talked about just yet but it's coming up very shortly I'm kind of like jumping all over the place here I haven't really got a strict um a strict kind of like what would you call it script I'm just kind of going with what's popping into my head I want to talk about community for a second Runeterra and something I never got the chance to experience in Hearthstone maybe because I wasn't streaming or because Hearthstone doesn't really have a community there since playing Runeterra and giving it a go and started streaming it for the first time ever I really got involved in this community that was a lot bigger than myself a huge community that I never expected to get involved with and meet a lot of people and that was kind of like one of the cool things I really like looked at Hearthstone for I looked at Hearthstone as like because no one I really know IRL plays card games as much and I kind of see like the competitive scene and if it's a chance for me to get involved in the competitive life meet some people that would be a lot of fun or even offline you know online sorry online streaming yourself I never got the opportunity to it didn't take me long since I started playing uh, Runeterra to meet tons of people. Uh, get like whether you, whether you're like the biggest player or not. Like it didn't take long because it's kind of a small game at the moment, so the community is kind of like you know everyone knows everyone, and that's really cool. I think that's like one of the coolest things I've ever experienced. In Hearthstone, it felt very just there was no community there, or I didn't find it at least, and so um. That was a big part. That was like something that I didn't expect to happen when I started this journey. That was another big thing. Runeterra brings out a card game. I get a lot of interest in it. I start playing it. I start playing Runeterra. Anyway, and um, I'm loving it. <clears throat> the gameplay is really cool. Everything seems really smooth. Um, it's got a lot of similarities to Hearthstone, don't get me wrong. In terms of like aesthetics, general card interaction, it all feels very much like Hearthstone. So it's not hard to pick up the general mechanics and the card game in general is pretty like, you know, linear, but in depth, linear, but in depth for sure. Community is really tight. Yes, it is. But it's small. Runeterra, I start playing it. I know, I know all the champions. I know everything. I can get behind the lore. That's cool. But the, the gameplay is mostly where it's at for me. For, in terms of Runeterra, like in Hearthstone, you can't really react to your opponent. Like there's no like counterplay and there's no like interactions. It's very much like you play your turn, your opponent plays their turn, they do whatever they want. You can't stop them from doing anything. Runeterra is a lot more in depth in that aspect. Like Runeterra to me is like the perfect balance between magic and like Hearthstone where you've got a certain amount of gameplay that's not going to drain you too much and you've got a certain amount of thinking to reward a good player and I feel like Runeterra rewards good players a lot more than Hearthstone could and that's cool any way to like build skill and show off my knowledge would be very useful and I think Runeterra was a great game in terms of doing that and in Hearthstone I just wasn't getting that I wasn't able to share my knowledge and show people my skill and so quickly I picked up Runeterra, I started climbing very fast and then they were kind of just went on making videos thought I'd get back into the content creation side of things see if I could share any of my thoughts see if I could like offer something that's bigger than myself to people and uh, I immediately started doing that and um, it was slow at first but then more recently it started to pick up and everything's just kind of growing with it but that's getting a bit too f this is getting that's getting a bit too far ahead of myself in general new game comes out rune terror i find a lot of interest in it i'm having a lot of fun so i'm making videos for it again i want to talk about timing a little bit more um so timing what i mean to say is i lost a lot of interest in content creation i lost a lot of interest in hearthstone uh timing so all this timing happened, I stopped playing a lot of games, etc. And then they announced the game. It was right about a time where uh, I was kind of like really fed up with my, like my IRL job. And I was like looking to make a change. 
and try something different. I missed making videos, I missed playing card games, so yeah, it was all very much timing, right? Game come out in January, I started playing the open beta, and I went along with it. And then um, even going on further, a bit closer to the current time zone time frame, the coronavirus gave me a lot more time to focus on content creation, a lot more time to focus on my game and pushing high ranks. Yo, what up, soft man? How you going? And uh, because I can't afford, like I'm, I'm kind of not poor, but I can't really like indulge like I used to. So there's, ironically, there's like no real way for me to even play Hearthstone right now. I can't afford to play Hearthstone. And this whole like rights plans for the games and stuff, making it free to play was a big help to me. And I realized it was gonna it was gonna pique the interest of a lot uh, wider audience, hopefully. Where being free to play, there's gonna be more people playing, hopefully, as time goes on and yeah. And so content creation, Rune Terra, a new game. I saw an opportunity as well to kind of get involved in a fresh start. Because um if I'm being honest, guys, it's kind of hard to like try and build up your brand or build up who you are or content for a game that's already heavily saturated. You'd have to really think of something outside of the box. And I just, um, some of the ideas that I had for Hearthstone, I just weren't working out. And so I thought maybe I could start implementing those ideas into Runeterra and see if I can build myself upon a new game. And I know it might sound like what kind of like one of those, like, like you're taking advantage of a game or something, but I can guarantee you a lot of content creators do this. They move on to games and card games, especially they'll move on to different card games to see if they have a, see if they have a chance of popping off in it. And that was that. All this timing happened, all this community happened, all this content creation ideas happened. Riot has his plans for the game and stuff. And I'm like, hell yeah. I'm like, hell yeah, dude. Let, let me get involved in this Runeterra game more. Then once I started playing, they started announcing more updates as well, like stuff that I didn't know at first, and it just kept me a lot more interested. Like once they released their um, Let's see if I can pull it up. It's in my it's in my Discord. I probably can't see it on this scene. I'm gonna go to my lore updates for a sec. Once they released this, this was a huge, um, this was a huge factor for me. This is when I, at this point, this is when I knew I'm like, this is when I knew I'm like, hell yeah, let's give Runeterra a go. Let's focus on this YouTube stuff. Let's make that content. And I'm like, God damn, they're actually planning on bringing out cards every two months with a new region every six months. The region makes a lot of sense to me because I was kind of thinking League of Legends card game would run out of champions eventually because there's only so many regions and cards and champions that they can think of. So it makes sense that they limit their region releases for every six months. Because eventually they're going to run into a problem where they're running out of champions and stuff in regions. So they're going to have to try and think of new ideas or maybe like revisiting some older champions, making multiples of them. But still new region, new cards every two months. That's insane. Every card game in history that I know of is like three to four month cycle for new cards. This is every two months with a balance update every month in between. So basically what's happening here is you have cards come out every two months. Every month, cards come out next month. Sorry. So in one month, new cards come out. One month later, balance update. One month later, new cards. That's a lot of, there's a lot of content there. There's a lot of ways to build decks, mix and match every single region. You're never going to run out of gas in terms of content creation. So I, what my to finalize all this content creation and blah, blah, blah that I'm doing, my goals are to make content bigger than myself, 
help people teach people just like what i would have might have done on hearthstone but just having the ability to do this more regularly and maybe get more involved in some sort of giant community and just build stuff i want to build stuff and i have all these ideas and um yeah it's really just inspiring me to do a lot and that's kind of where i am in terms of content creation and i, I would never really get this from hearthstone anymore I, it would just not be the same these ideas wouldn't have come to me and always, uh, like this, what I'm doing right now wouldn't have come to me if I literally uh, stopped playing Hearthstone, right? And we wouldn't be, I wouldn't be where I'm at. I feel like I've been rambling on about that for a little bit, but I hope, I hope that like kind of makes a lot of sense in terms of like the full picture. I'm not done talking yet, but I think as long as we're kind of all roughly somewhere, because <laughs> I know I'm jumping all over the place and it's probably just like, this is probably why people write up scripts and shit, but not me. I kind of just speak my mind. I probably, I, I was talking about, I was going to be reading chat, but I've been missing a lot of stuff, dude. I realized um when I get the ball rolling on something I'm talking about, I just kind of keep going with it. I love your life, but I'm going, your life is late. I'm falling asleep. I'm so sorry, Davey. It seems I'm reaching out to a lot of viewers who are tuning into my stream super late before bed. Thank you, Davey, so much for hanging out. Uh, show chat in display. What do you mean? Um, okay, this. It's kind of there. Good night, buddy. Yeah, it's back on screen. Yeah, yeah, sorry, I was on the wrong screen. I switched over. Uh, Mortimer. I know you saw the opening. It's exactly what I did, and Vice and Cheesy and Faint. Yeah, it did. So I saw an opportunity there. It's all about taking opportunities, right? And yeah, definitely agreed on the roadmap, guys. That Once that roadmap come out, I was just, I was just clicked in. I'm like, hell yeah, dude. Plenty of gameplay. Hearthstone has the most secrets. Community is real tight. Yeah, we're, we're about today on chat, I think. The next thing I do want to talk about, this is going to be a bit more personal. And I'm happy to share it because it's nothing, it's like nothing too personal. It's like, it's just, I'm going to start talking about my personal like beliefs, my wants, my like, my motivation and stuff behind everything. But before I do that, I will just talk about one more thing. I will just follow up on the fact in case Hearthstone viewers are watching. Uh, Hearthstone is going to have a special place in my heart for a long period of time. Unfortunately, I am not enjoying playing it at the moment, but who knows if I ever get back into it in the future for whatever reason. As for Runeterra, I'm really enjoying it at the moment, but who knows what might happen in the future, right? A big part of me wanting to play Runeterra is a lot to do with the competitive scene. And me believing I can shine a lot more in this game than I could in Hearthstone because it rewards, as I said, it rewards good players. The gameplay in Runeterra is great. I can't get enough of it. I can't get enough of it. Like, I like to play it in certain doses. One thing I did skip. So my expectations, and then we'll jump into moving forward in my personal, uh, personal beliefs. So my expectations about Riot making a card game is that I hope, I hope that it's somehow, it won't ever be as big as like Hearthstone. I understand that. I don't think Runeterra could ever be bigger than Hearthstone eventually, unfortunately. I'll go more into detail about that later if we want, after I've talked about the personal life moving forward. That's just what I kind of also believe. But I don't think Runeterra is ever going to be as big as Hearthstone. That's okay. My expe expectations for Runeterra is that they don't do what the other card games did. So it's funny, Runeterra is doing, it seems like Runeterra is doing everything right at the moment, but that's because they're the last to the game. They've seen all these other card games. They see all these other card games make big mistakes. And they are able to capitalize on all those mistakes that they did. 
and come up with their own ideas and concepts and they smashed it in terms of like their introduction to the card game scene they absolutely s smashed it my expectations are that they develop a healthy competitive season uh competitive drive uh direction my hope as well is that they like kind of they do what the earlier days of Hearthstone did, but better, where they kind of give anyone the ability to kind of pursue their like little ambitions for competitive, etc., and they give them direction to where to go to. I don't, I don't want to see them develop this like what Hearthstone, what Magic did, where it's like the um, it's like the E League. I don't want to see them, see them make like the Rune Terror League, where only the top sixteen players compete. I want them to kind of like eventually organize like these uh, tournaments and stuff and just do hopefully do what Hearthstone did but better which I think they could do I hope they understand that these like card game leagues are just really toxic and give players no drive that's what league gave gave a lot of players to like a lot of drive a lot of direction knowing where to go to to get better like they climb the ladder get the challenger, maybe get drafted by a team and then you go from there. Yeah. I'm not sure what <clears throat> Maroon Terror's current plans are. I'm going to say that <clears throat> I'm going to, I'm going to assume, assuming that Corona is holding their ideas back. I think they will eventually <coughs> sorry guys start to take control of competitive scene <coughs> the beauty about any card game that, when it first comes out is that at first when it comes to competitive scene they kind of give it they give it to the community the community just takes control of it immediately The community takes control of the card game uh, competitive scene immediately and we're seeing that happen right now and this could be strictly because it's quite hard for them to organize all the stuff at first but they also kind of i feel like they sit on the sideline and they wait and see how the competitive scene looks they see how many people are interested etc Hearthstone did a really bad thing too they talked a lot of game about organizing this like in-game tournament mode which never happened. That was a big blunder on their behalf. I think they want to see how way how well the game stays around before they push competitive scene. Yes, correct, correct. So even if the game is not as big as it possibly can be, they like they'll they'll never have like LCS sized. They'll never have like LCS sized card game world championships i don't think that will happen but there will eventually need to be some sort of thing whether or not they invest a lot of money into it or not they will eventually step out provide this kind of because there has to be a rune terror world champion there's going to eventually be a rune terror world champion right they're going to eventually do it they're not going to like it's it's going to stay big enough they're gonna make sure this game doesn't die, guys. They're gonna put a lot of resources into it. And even roughly where it's sitting at the moment, I don't think that's gonna necessarily die. It's very similar on par with like Magic Digital. So I, I don't think the game's gonna die. And I think as more expansions come out and come out, they're gonna nail it. And it's eventually gonna start being championships. Whether or not they invest a lot of money into it, I don't know. But if they don't want to, they will eventually reach out to some of the current community the people who have been building these tournaments organizing all this stuff i'm not sure specifically who they'll talk to or what they'll do but they'll step in at some point and give some some compensation or organize something officially whether it's big or small that's my hope at least that's what i expect and those are my hopes for how they'll tackle the competitive scene whether or not they take full control of it 
will help support some of the people making it currently and giving official titlements and a place for a person to be called a high school champion. I mean, a fucking uh, Riot's Runeterra champion. Yeah, so as Softman says that Riot is officially supporting high school LOL tourneys. Yeah, it's all extremely early days though. The problem is it's all extremely early days. I hope that the card game stays successful. I believe it will stay successful. And I expect Runeterra to eventually step in and build some sort of tournament direction for people that want to become the best of the best. And that's what's going to drive me. So at the moment, I'm not pushing myself too much in terms of, uh, you know, ranked, just like kind of offline tournaments and stuff. Once I know officially what they want to do with it, that's when you're going to see five head fake hero come out. Those are my expectations. And that covers most of my, that covers most of the focus points. Half Halfstone, pretty cool gameplay as well. We've talked about timing of everything. We've talked about my content creation journey. Lore, I like League of Legends. It's not hard for me to get involved in all that kind of stuff. And we've talked about the community. I guess what's left? This is the last subject I want to talk about. I don't know why I'm making this look so dramatic. It's not going to be that dramatic. But I guess it's probably going to be a big factor to why I'm doing what I'm doing. And why I'm playing Runeterra and why I'm making content for it and stuff. And this is one of the reasons why I would have also switched from Hearthstone to a different game eventually. I was never, I personally didn't believe I was going to make it this is going to sound like kind of like really coin flippy and kind of weird, but I, I come to the realization that if I, if I really wanted to succeed in social media, YouTube, etc., I wasn't going to be able to do that in Hearthstone because I was never going to be like the Hearthstone person. <clears throat> Just like I'm probably not going to be the Rune Terror person, but definitely I wasn't going to be any person in Hearthstone. It was, it was too hard to drive myself in the competitive scene and there was already plenty of great content creators out there doing just about everything I could think of in terms of Hearthstone. There was no idea left unsaid. Although I had a few, I lost interest. Softman says they'll surely support some official stuff at higher level comp competition for law. Yes, they definitely will. Yeah, I guess I should have drank more water before I started talking. That's true though, Mortimer. You'd argue, if you're so interested in the competitive scene, fake hero, why not throw yourself at the competitive scene at the moment? Uh, I guess I'm, it's kind of like, um, in, it's, in terms of like the reward at the moment, it's not really there. There's no like rewards there at the moment. So it's hard for me to justify kind of sacrificing my time when I'm like, I'm also making like a lot of content. Like I'm pretty much, if I'm not streaming, I'm busy doing something. I have, I have very little, um, very little me time between all this. So as much as like, I, I like to play as tournaments and get their practice at the moment, the reward is not there for me. And it's kind of hard to wake up a bit early as well. But once I see that there's, um, cause like time, time is money, right? Time is money, I guess, in a sense. And time is, uh, it's kind of like I need to like make the most use out of my time as possible Let's say if I wasn't doing like YouTube or something, I'd probably have a lot more time and a lot more interest in doing it But uh, yeah, that's kind of like the reason why I'm not doing it But I would like to I would like to play in more tournaments don't get me wrong, but it just doesn't work out Now um, no such thing as talking too much according to me. That's it Anyway Massive drive for competitive. <laughs> Every game I've played, guys, since a young age, super competitive. I am a, I'm a super competitive, very uh, emotional gamer. Like I kind of, I get into something, I see, I, I just see, I just see like, what? How do I, how do I get from point A to point B? How do I become the best? What are my options? How do I do it? 
I pushed myself so hard in League of Legends that it broke me. <laughs> it broke me. But yeah, that's another big thing for me. And Riot Games, making this game, uh, also how it gives me the potential for his huge drive. I always like to be the best. I like to be the best. That's just kind of me. I want to be able to like, <laughs> this sounds so bad, but um, legitimately like, I do like recognition. I like recognition. I think I like seeing my faults as well. Don't get me wrong. But when I, whenever I do something good or play something really well, I like the feeling of winning. It sounds really bad. I don't know which way to put that where it makes it sound okay. But yeah, I guess we're all, we all want to win, right? But yeah, and that's me. And so Riot Games is like at the moment really well known for doing League of Legends and the competitive scene and just, yeah, all that drive is just gets me excited. Even if I'm not playing, when I, I still watch like League of Legends, uh, VODs for some of the LCS and stuff, I get hyped around all this kind of stuff and like, this might this might not be this might not be as on topic, but esports is a huge interest of mine. Huge interest of mine. Like if there was ever a job that I'd considered doing that wasn't like maybe considering trying to do like streaming full time or content creation full time, I would love to work in esports, doing just about anything. Selling candy behind the bar or shout casting. Limitless possibilities. And when I get involved in Rune Terra, a new game up and coming. I see, I see limitless op opportunities. Opportunities that I wouldn't see in Hearthstone because it was just, it's, it's kind of hard, right? But I it definitely see, I see, I see a lot more ways of how to do things. Um, when it's a new game, and so do, so do lots of other content creators, I'm sure. Limitless opportunities. And yeah. I see, I see a lot of opportunities in Runeterra. So it's kind of like my personal beliefs for Runeterra, my personal beliefs for how I tackle like kind of like content creation and the games I play and what I'm doing for it is that, yeah. And I felt like, I felt like I, sorry. I felt like I had nothing to offer in Hearthstone. Runeterra, I feel I've already started providing and look forward to providing more. Ideas are just coming to me a lot more naturally in Runeterra than they did in Hearthstone. Uh, it could be a numerous amount of reasons why, but it just feels easier and funner and like everything feels really natural i don't know it's kind of cool and moving forward i'd like to just build something I, I don't know what it looks like yet i don't know what the next year and a bit has but i'm i'm like i'm like working really hard to try and think of ways i can be different and provide a niche that's not quite there i guess that's all i really have to say I don't think there's anything that was really missed. And it wasn't really my personal life, but it was just kind of like my personal feelings towards games. I don't really enjoy single player games much. I enjoy multiplayer games. I enjoy competitive games. I enjoy card games a lot too. So even though this was kind of titled the why I moved from Hearthstone to Runeterra, it kind of turned into something definitely a lot stranger. 